For this Tunisian crochet project I used a hook that's approximately 5.75 millimeters in size and this is optional also but I have a pencil grip that I use. You can purchase these, they're really inexpensive, they're just pencil grips and just place them right on the hook and it just helps to keep your thumb cushioned so you're not pressing against the metal as you work. And you're going to need a pair of scissors as well as a tapestry needle or darning needle. Now I'm not going to bury my loose yarn in so the I barely use my tapestry needle so the only time I use my tapestry needle is possibly when attaching the fleece because I need to make the embroidery stitch around the fleece. So again, just a tapestry needle or darning needle. Now for mine, I like to work in four blocks. So here's block one, block two, block three, and block four. And each block is 40 by 40. So you have 40 blocks going this way, and you have 40 blocks going this way. And that's just the way that I like to work with mine. So I printed these up, up off of Stitch Fiddle after I drew them on blank 40 by 40 graphs. So I'm going to be starting with block one to show you how to make your Tunisian simple stitch to follow the graph. And then I'm going to also show you how to color change. Now I'm doing something a little bit different. In my Tunisian Crochet Under the Sea Mystery Cal graph gan, I had just finished a 40 by 40 block, but I'm going to test it where I actually work the block above. So I'm going to be working 40 by 80. So I'm just going to continue all the way. I used to combine these two blocks. So if you make my Tunisian Under the Sea blocks, you'll find that I showed the technique that I used where I attached the bottom block to the top block. But again, for this video tutorial to get you started with the Australia Wildlife blocks, I'm going to be working 40, 40 by 80. And then we'll be attaching the blocks together after we finish the 40 by 80 blocks. So I'll show you how to combine the, the 80 by 80 blocks together. So I've already worked block 2 and block 4. So here's what the graph looks like for block 2 and block 4. And then when you're finished, this is how your work will look. So you can see how I have the 40, I started with the 40 for the width and then 80 for the height. And this is what it looks like after I'm finished. So you can see how the graph comes to life. This is what the graph looks like. And then this is what the finished Tunisian crochet looks like. So again, I'm going to be working these two blocks with you on video tutorial, block number one and block number three. So I've already finished block number two and block number four. As far as the yarn that you use, you can use any medium four 100% acrylic yarn that you want. And for mine, I chose for the main color, the background color, I chose I love this yarn and the color was medium blue and for the leaves I chose Karen one pound so you can choose whatever medium for 100% acrylic yarn that you want and the color choice that you want I'm just going to show you the colors that I used in block one in case you liked the colors that I chose for the koala I also chose I love this yarn and the color is gray mist and then any medium 400% acrylic yarn for the tree and the branches. So I just chose a chocolate colored brown and also a black colored yarn for the outline for the koala. Now if you like bobbins, I used clothes pins for my bobbins for the Tunisian Crochet Under the Sea Mystery Cal. So if you like to see how I did that, you can go to that mystery uh, cal, Crochet Along. That's my Tunisian Crochet Under the Sea Mystery Cal for the year 2020. Now, for this one, I'm not going to be using bobbins or clothespins. I'm just going to leave them attached to the skein of yarn. So for the first row, I made it easy because I made it all one color. And I plan on doing that for each of my blocks, starting with the main color. And for the first block, I'm going to be showing you how to make the starting chain, as well as the first row. And the first row is all blue, the background color blue. 
So the first thing we want to do is make the starting chain. So you just take your yarn and just fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around the hook. Then you're going to make a chain of 40. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorials. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 40 and then come back. Now after you finish your chain of 40, and I'm just going to give you the measurement of it. So the measurement of mine is approximately 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and a half inches. Now you're just going to take your hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So count back 1, 2, go into the second chain from the hook and bring up a loop. And you're just going to do that all the way across, go into the next chain, bring up a loop, and you're just going to keep repeating this all the way across until you have all 40 loops on your Tunisian crochet hook. I'm just going to back up so you can see the rest of my hook. So you can see how the pencil grip helps me so I don't put too much pressure on my thumb. You don't need to squeeze it real tight, just lo hold it loosely. And just put all 40 loops onto the hook. You can see how I'm holding the hook. So go ahead, finish putting all 40 loops on the hook and then come back. So now I have all 40 loops on the hook and each of the loops corresponds with a, a block on your graph. So we have 40 loops on our hook so we finished half of the first row. So we're over here on the first row and now we're going to work our way back to complete row 1. So right now I finished half of row 1. To work your way back what you're going to do is you're always going to start this way when you're going you're crocheting backwards. So you're going to take and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through one loop only. So one loop only. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops at the same time. So two loops at the same time. And then you just yarn over and go through two loops each time all the way back to where you started and then you would have completed row one. So go ahead, finish yarning over and going through two loops at a time, all the way back across to where you started. And you'll make these nice vertical loops to complete row one. And again, each vertical loop corresponds with one block on your graph. So this is how my work looks, and I just finished row one. So we just finished row one on our graph. Now we're working row two. And I always put a little check by the box when I'm finished. So I finished row one. Now I'm on row two. So right here I'm on row two. And on row two we have some green colors on block 29. So when block 29 starts the green colored blocks and I have one, two, three, four, five of the green colored blocks. I'm going to show you how to add those in. So we're going to bring up 28 loops of the blue color and then 29 will be our color change. So we have one block already on or one loop already on our Tunisian crochet hook. So now you're going to go into the vertical stitch. So I'm just going to show you a close up. So you can see how the vertical stitches will line up. So the one on the end is the loop that you have on your hook. So that counts as your first stitch or first block. Here is the second block or second stitch. And you're going to go right under that vertical stitch with your crochet hook. 
So you take your Tunisian crochet hook, go under that vertical stitch, bring up a loop, and then you can see how the vertical stitches will line up one over the other. So that's my second. Here's my third. And I want to double check how many loops I need on my hook. So again, I need 28. So 28 loops on the hook. So that's three, four. And you can see how I use my thumb to help push the vertical post onto the hook. Five. Six. So I'll show you a couple more and then I'll let you finish. So that's seven. And again, each of these vertical posts corresponds to a block on your graph. So go ahead and finish putting all 28 loops onto your crochet hook and then come back. So you can see how it kind of twists on your hook. You can just kind of move it down if you need to. And I have 28 loops on my crochet hook. So now I'm ready to add the color. So on the next loop, I'm going to bring up a loop with the green color. So I bring up a loop with the green color and then you want to set your work down and just tie a knot. And no, you do not see the knots on the right side. I had people ask that question before. I tie a lot of knots and I've never had it show through on the right side. It's always on the back. Then just double check your graph to make sure you know how many green loops that you're going to need. So I put the first one up already on my hook. So I need a total of one, two, three, four, five green. So right now I have one. Two. Three. Four. And five. So now I need more blue on this side. Now there's two options for this. You can either stretch the blue across the back and bring up a loop with the blue that you already have attached, or you can take and just pull some yarn. And this is where the bobbins come in handy, but I didn't want sometimes I don't like using the bottom bobbins. I just like to pull some yarn. So I have some extra yarn that I'm going to leave on this side to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it from the skein. So I'm going to cut that yarn from the skein. And then that frees up my skein of yarn to bring up a loop on this side. So I left a long yarn end for this side to work with. And I'm bringing up a new yarn on this side after the green loops. So this, this yarn end is attached to my skein. So this is attached to my skein of yarn. I'm going to bring up a loop. So you can use bobbins or clothespins. That's, I show how to do that with my Tunisian crochet under the sea cowl. And it works well, but for this I just sometimes I just like to leave an excess amount of yarn and then just work from the skein. So it's just an option, whichever is most comfortable for you. Then the rest of my colors are blue. So I'm just going to bring up loops with my blue colored yarn for the rest on this row for row two. So now I have 40 loops on my hook and you can either count the 40 loops before you start to crochet back or you can count as you crochet back. So I'm going to count as I crochet back and also I'm going to be making a color change. So to count on the way back, you're going to yarn over and you go through one loop only to start. So there's one. And then the rest of them, you go through two loops. So there's two. 
three, four, five, six, seven. So after I finished seven, you can see that I have one blue loop and one green loop. That means that you're going to drop your blue loop and pick up your green loop to continue crocheting on with your new color. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now you have a green loop and a blue loop, so you're going to drop the green loop and pick up the blue for the color change. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and you can see I'm just turning 27, 28, 29, and my thumb is on the pencil grip. I lost count, so you should finish up with 40. So when you finish, you'll have a count of 40, and that means that you have the right number. If you don't end up with 40, then you did something wrong, and you just have to frog or undo your work to find where the error was. And then 40. You can see also, to help prevent errors, you can see that all of the vertical loops line up. So all the vertical stitches line up with the previous row. So that shows you that you've crocheted correctly. So now we're going to move up to the third row. So now we're going to start with row three. So you look at your chart. So row three, let me just check two. So we finished row two, now we're on to row three, and row three you can see starts with a brown color. And then we have 25 brown loops. So you just take, and the first loop on your hook is the first block on your graph. So we don't want blue, we want brown. So you bring in your brown colored yarn and then bring up a loop with the brown colored yarn. Then just take and cinch down the blue. And you can go ahead and cut the blue because we're not um, using blue for a while. And you want to leave a little bit of a loose yarn end for the back. And I had a lot of excess blue, so I'm going to save this to bring in on a different... You can save that to bring it up when you need blue again. And then just take and tie a knot with the blue. And then you have the brown loop on your hook to crochet with. And again, you may want to double check with your graph. And I need 25 of the brown color. So you need 25 loops of the brown color on your hook. So that's how easy it is when using Tunisian crochet to follow the graph. I'll finish this row with you. So 25, go ahead and bring up 25 loops of the brown color and then come back. So now I have 25 loops of the brown. I'm going to look at my graph again. And I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of the green. So here I have my green already attached. Right here, it's real close so I can just pull it across. So I'm going to take the green, pull it slightly so that the stitches will go together, and then bring up a loop with your green. And then you just need to bring up eight loops with your green color. And 
then the rest will be the blue color, just like the graph. So go ahead, finish the rest, and then come back, and I'll show you how to return with all of the color changes. So I'm going to go ahead and count and color change with you on the way back, and it will curl slightly, and that's normal. So again, you can either count your loops before or after, and I like to count after as I'm crocheting back across to finish the row. So now I'm going to show you how to count back. So always you yarn over and pull through one loop to start, so that's one. And then the rest are two loops. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. So I have two different colors, so I know I need to color change. So I drop the blue, pick up the green. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22. I'm going to back up so you can see how I hold and turn. 23, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. That's what you always want to hear is a 40. That way you know you've worked everything correctly. All of your stitches are lining up and corresponding with the graph. And you don't have to hold really tight on this side. So make sure you loosely hold and then use the pencil grip to help cushion your thumb. So it's that easy. I'll work one more row with you, but then that's how you crochet and follow the graph. It's real simple. So now I'm just going to mark three as complete, and then I'm going to be working row four. So on row four, it looks like I have 26 of the brown, so I'm going to bring up 26 loops with the brown colored yarn. So again, I have one loop already on my hook that counts as the first block. It's the right color. Go into the second stitch, bring up a loop for my second loop, and remember I need 26 of the brown color. So now I have 25 loops on, I need one more. Now you here you can see that with the green, there's a little gap here between the stitches, go ahead and pull on the green just a little to bring the stitches together. Don't pull it too hard. Then you're just going to bring up a loop with your 26 brown color. Then you need to look and see what's next. So then I need one, two, three, four, five of the green. and then the rest will be blue. So again, see how you get that little great gap between the color changes? Just gently pull the stitches close together, not too tight, just the equal distance as the other stitches, then bring up a loop with the blue, and then finish the row with the blue color. So now I'm just going to count on the way back and color change on the way back. So always start with one loop and then the rest are two loops. So that was one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So that's all there is to it. That's all you have to do. You always end with 40, so you know you have the same number of stitches for each row. And also, you can see how my vertical stitches are all lining up and all of the colors correspond with the boxes. Now you'll notice that it curls. That's normal for Tunisian crochet. Don't worry about that. Once we finish sewing the blocks together and putting the backing and the border around the whole blanket, you're not going to be able to see any of the curling. It lays flat. So now you can finish your graph and then when you finish all 80 rows, remember you're making the block number one, and then you're just going to continue on with block number three to finish this side of the, out of the four blocks. So you're finishing block one and block three, and then when you finish those blocks, then you continue on with your new block, which will be block four, and then you continue crocheting up and finishing up with block number two. So now I have all four blocks complete and to two large panels. And you can see how the arm will line up here and then the ear will line up here. Now what you want to do is with the right sides facing up, go ahead and fold the panel on top of the other panel so that the wrong side is facing up and the right sides are together. And you also want to line up the arm and the ear portion or whatever portion that you have on the panels together so that they line up properly. And now we're ready to Tunisian crochet the two panels together. So now you want to line up the colors and the first color that I have is blue. So I'm going to take and put my crochet hook into that first block or first stitch and then grab the stitch on the other panel and then bring up a loop and then tie a knot and you want to bring up a loop with the same color that you have on the panels. So I have one more stitch with the blue so go into the next stitch and then bring up the other blue color. Then I have a brown stitch. So I'm going to go into the brown stitch and bring up a color with the brown stitch. Brown yarn. And then you're just going to bring up a total of 40 loops and you're going to do 40 loops at a time as you crochet these two panels together. And every time you come to a color change, like right here will be my next color change is black, but I'm going to be pulling up loops of brown until I reach that black color. And basically, you don't have to do 40. 40 is usually what will fit on my crochet hook, but if you can fit more, you can cro keep crocheting more if you want to. Make sure that the 
colors line up so now I have the black colored yarn And then my next color will be the gray. And you just keep repeating this until you have all the loops on your Tunisian crochet hook. So now I reached the other black stitch here. So I'm going to just stretch the black yarn across. If it's too many stitches, sometimes you'll have to cut and start a new black yarn, but this one's stretched across easily. So now, when you have two different colors, like you have brown and gray, I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to pick brown, since I already had brown on my hook. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the yarn across. and then I'm just going to bring up loops with the brown. You just have to pick one color that's the same. So now you can see I reached the black yarn again. It's too far to stretch, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the yarn down here. I'm just going to cut enough to where I can yarn over and bring enough yarn through to cover those areas. And then just bring up a new black yarn strand for this area. and a new gray also. And I'm almost ready to go back. I have enough loops on, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this first. So now I have enough loops on my hook, I'm going to go ahead and head back. You go through one, and then go through two loops at a time, just like we've done before for our rows of Tunisian crochet. So now I have a color change. And then just repeat that all the way down, just like we've done before. Then when you're back to where you started, you can finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through just to um, tie a knot and leave a loose yarn end. And then make sure you cut all of the other strands too, leaving a loose yarn end. Just go back and make sure that you have knots so that it doesn't come undone. And then on the right side you can see how you have a nice seam and you've attached the so that they match and it looks great. So then you just continue this process all the way down until both panels are finished. So now I'm going to start where I left off. So this is where I left off. So now I'm going to bring up a brown yarn right where I left off. Tie a knot. And then you may want to, at certain points, place a stitch marker so that they line up. So I have a stitch marker in place to hold those two pieces together so that they line up. And this is what it looks like when you open it up. You can hardly see the seam right down the center. That's how it should look on the right side. You can see how I lined up the paws and it turned out great.